Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex. And this month we're going to take a look at Plex Photos. They actually have a fairly decent photo organizing tool built right into the Plex media server. And if you've got hard drives full of photos, this might be a fun way to organize them all. And we're going to dive into what the photos feature is all about in this video. Now I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it gets uploaded and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this photo feature is all about. And we're going to take a look at Plex here running on my computer first because this might be the easiest way to get started with it as far as organizing and adding files. But we will look at it running on a television here with my NVIDIA Shield so you can get a sense as to how TV-based devices work. And we'll also look at my iPhone in a little while too, so you can see how it works on a smaller screen. And just like anything else with Plex, it will follow you uh, wherever you go. So you can get access to these photos anywhere in the world. And if you have people that you're sharing your libraries with, they can also look at those photos on their devices too. Now I'll note at the outset here that the Plex Photos feature is not going to be as robust as what you might get from Apple Photos or Google Photos, for example but it is free with the Plex Media Server, and most of the features you're going to see in this video are part of the free tier of the Plex Media Server. So for a free photo organizer, I actually think it's pretty good. And what I really like about it is that you can point Plex at just a folder of photos, and it will organize things for you in a way that uh, might make it a fun way to revive some of those old photos you've got sitting on hard drives everywhere. And if you're hosting this on your own equipment, there's no monthly fee for it. It's just there and you can add as many photos as your hard drive will allow you to accept. Now, I have already set up my photo library, but this sets up just like any other library on Plex. So if I go in here and edit uh, my current settings, you can see that I've got it pointed right now at a photos folder on one of my NAS devices. And I could easily add additional folders where I've got photos hanging out and you can compile them all into a single library here just like you would with other Plex media and once you add that it'll start bringing the photos in and even without touching it you will get initially a timeline here based on the file dates of the photos or the file dates that are in the uh, EXIF information from your camera so you can very quickly start browsing through by timeline here and begin your organization that way and if you have a Plex Pass subscription you get two features that are pretty useful. One is auto-tagging, which I'll demo in a few minutes, where it'll actually take a look at your pictures and give you some keywords based on what its AI has seen in it. And you also get location-based browsing based on the GPS coordinates that might be embedded in the photo. Now, as we browse through the timeline here, if you want to look at a photo, you just click on it, kind of self-explanatory. Uh, you can move through your timeline by photo here just by using the left and right arrow keys. Another thing that you can do with this is view videos too. So if you have videos as part of your photo album, those will import alongside your photographs as well. You get a little less metadata on the videos, but they will uh, present themselves uh, much in the same way. Now it works with most of the image formats you would expect it to work with. However, some of the newer compression formats like HEIC, which is something the iPhone and some new Android phones are using, does not appear to be supported at the moment. When I brought those images in, it did not index them. If that changes, I'll put a note uh, down below in the comment section. But I did find it works with raw images. I shoot a lot of raw photos on my Nikon camera, and it brought in these just fine. You can see this huge 26 megabyte file. I brought it in as raw and did uh, process the image so I could see it here within Plex. Uh, note, though, that the Plex Photo feature does not have any editing features, so if you are working with raw images, you'll probably want to stick with whatever tools you're using to process those images, but you can at least bring them in, index them, and look at them within the Plex library. Now, as for video formats, I found that H.264 videos import and playback just fine. HEVC videos also import, but I was having some trouble getting those to work on my web browser. And I'm not sure why that is because they play back just fine on my NVIDIA Shield and on my iPhone. And I suspect this might have something to do with transcoding limitations of my NAS device. And we've talked about 
all the different requirements for HEVC transcoding in another video, which I'll point you to. So just be ready for that. You might have a few issues with HEVC video, depending on how you want to play those videos back. Now, one thing that's a little confusing in Plex Photos is what defines an album like you might have on iPhoto or in Google Photos. And in Plex, an album is basically a playlist. And sometimes they use the terms interchangeably, which gets a little confusing. So for example, here right now on my recommended screen, it's pointing me at recent albums. And if I click on this album of Tesla's here, you can see that it now calls it a playlist. So just be ready for that. And what I'm gonna do here is go into my library and just build out a new playlist of computers that I'd like to build. So I'm going to uh, just bring my mouse over to the little circle here and select this one, this one, this one, and maybe this one, this one, and that one. And what, what I'll do now that I have a bunch of images selected is go up here to add to, and I can create a new playlist here called computer photos maybe. And this will essentially become an album on the recommended screen. But if I go over here to playlists, it'll also find it that way. And I can browse those images individually. Now you also have the ability to filter your photos and create smart playlists. Let me show you that real quick. Uh, so if we dive into my library, you can see up here right now, it's showing me everything, but I can drill into specific pieces of metadata and filter based on that. So for example, if I wanted to see everything made by my Nikon camera, I can click on camera make and go to Nikon. And that will give me four photos that are currently in the library shot with that camera, including the raw photo and a couple of other ones that I processed in Aperture on my Mac back in the old days of Aperture. And then I can go over here to add to and create a smart playlist based on that filter. So I'm gonna save this as Nikon album. And now anytime I take another picture with that Nikon camera and add it to my Plex library, it will automatically uh, put itself into the Nikon album. And you can tell which ones are smart playlists like this one versus regular ones because you'll see a little gear here. Uh, now you can go back in and edit this uh, so you can change it maybe to, I don't know, let's change it to Apple here and update the playlist. So now even though it's called Nikon, it's actually just filtering on the photos taken with my iPhone. So you can go in and edit those later. And again, those will dynamically update anytime a new photo matching that criteria is added to your album. Now you can also tag the photo by clicking on the edit button here. And this will give you the ability to edit some of the metadata that's attached to the file. It doesn't look like you can change some of the EXIF data, but you can uh, create a summary of the uh, file here. Uh, so I can say Sasha dog hanging around. So that'll be a little narrative that I can have attached to that photo. You also have the ability to create tags here. So I'm gonna create a Sasha tag, which we hadn't created yet before. And you're also gonna see here some auto tags because I am a PlexPass subscriber. So what it will do is try to uh, look at the image through an AI algorithm and add uh, things that it thinks match that dog. And it generally gets pretty close to the mark here. It doesn't identify her as a husky, at least in this photo, but it does say sled dog, dog, canine, puppy, cute. So it will try to add some of these auto tags to the mix, but of course you can add your own or remove some of the auto tags if they don't uh, meet what you're looking for here. And then of course you've got the name of the file. So I'm gonna save that real quick. And then what I could even do is find other pictures of Sasha. So here's another one here and one here. I can go in and uh, edit these and maybe uh, add the Sasha tag to those. So I can just type in Sasha here. And because we've added that before, I can click that and save it. And then of course I could create a smart playlist based on the Sasha tag if I want to pull uh, all the Sasha photos up dynamically. Now your photos are also part of the Plex Universal Search. So if we go up here and type in dog and we scroll down here, you can see that there's an automatic tag section for those AI tags. And I can click on dog here and I just get photos of dogs in my library. I could also type in Sasha, which of course is my photo tag and I can pull things up that way too. So you've got pretty good integration here of your photo library with the rest of your Plex media. Now, the only other premium feature of Plex Photos right now is location tagging. So you won't have that on the free version, but you do have it if you are on Plex Pass. So for example, if I do a search for Hawaii, where I have some photos in my photo album, uh, you can see that I've got an option here to search based on Hawaii as a place. 
And if I do that, it'll pull up all of the photos that it has in the library that were shot in Hawaii. And we jump over to some of the other platforms, you'll see a few other things you can do with these photos and locations while you're browsing. So let's take a look now at how you bring your photos over to Plex. Now, one thing I wanna note here, unfortunately, is that they just disabled the feature that allows you to back up photos from your phone automatically via the Plex client app. That was something that was in there for a long time. It has been discontinued as of June of this year, right now. Uh, but there are some alternatives that people have been talking about if you are looking for some kind of automated solution. Uh, this one called PhotoSync is what a lot of people have been talking about. I haven't had a chance to play with this yet, but from what I'm reading, I kind of like what I see here because you can devise your own backup strategy and it doesn't require the use of a cloud intermediary. So you could, for example, set it up so that you can have your phone back up over the local network via an SMB connection or an SFTP connection to your NAS device, for example, but they do have cloud options as well. And this might be something that can kind of bridge that gap of getting photos off your phone automatically and over uh, to the device where you're storing them. Now, what we're gonna do here is add a bunch of photos that I have from my very first digital camera that I bought uh, way back in 1998. And I've got some more Hawaii photos in here. I really like going to Hawaii, along with some Vegas photos from the now defunct uh, Star Trek ride there. And what I'm gonna do is just bring in this entire folder into my photos folder on the NAS device. And this folder is what Plex is currently looking at for its photo library. And what I really like about how Plex Photos works is that if you have a file structure for how you have photos organized on your hard drive right now, it doesn't touch it at all. So if you've got a really nice folder structure, it'll just look at that to get its photos, but won't move anything. So if you ever brought photos into uh, Apple Photos, for example, it creates this crazy directory structure. You can't easily get at the files if you wanted to have a separate organization of those files. Uh, here, whatever you got, Plex is gonna work with and it's not gonna mess with it. It stores all of that metadata separately. So if you've got, again, a big folder full of files, you can add organization to it without messing up the structure of how you have those files stored. Now, if you don't see those photos in your library after you drag them in, you might just need to do a quick refresh of your library. So we'll do that now real quick. And you can see now I've got this 1998 thing here. Now, here's what's neat about how Plex Photos works is that in addition to creating the playlists, which basically become albums, it also will group photos by the folders you've put them in. So if you have all these photos set up in folders over the years, it's just gonna bring them in as groups of photos. So if I go here to 1998, you can see all the photos that were in that folder are now all here grouped together. And that's a neat way to approach this as well. So Plex will respect the file system order here. And although it doesn't call those folders albums, it kind of treats them as one without having to go through and create separate albums every time you bring in a block of photos. And then of course, all the metadata will allow you to search on those photos individually if you want to. And moving over to our TV interface, it will sync of course up with your Plex server. So if I go into my Hawaii trip here, I can view the photos there. And then if I push down on my controller, uh, inside the TV interface here, I can get similar photos in my album here. I can also look at other photos that were taken that day, other photos that were taken in that location. And then it's got a bunch of the auto tags here as well. So if I wanted to see every picture of what it thought was an ocean, I can pull those up and kind of browse deeper into my photo library through the TV interface here. And of course, all the videos will play back as well. So if we go back to my timeline here at the top, I've got one of those HEVC files. And as you can see here, that starts right up uh, as we start playing, and this is a 4K file too. So pretty cool, you can get in and uh, get everything organized on your computer and then load up photos on your TV to show your friends if you want. And then on mobile devices, it might look a little bit different, but it's actually laid out in the same way. So you can get your filtering up here. You've got your playlists that we looked at earlier. I can browse through my Hawaii trip folder here and then dive into an image if I want. I do have the option to Chromecast this to a compatible Chromecast or an Android TV device. So that's a neat little feature. And if I click on the tag button here, I get a small map and I can look at some of the other photos that the auto tagger tagged here in my uh, library. So I can click on other palm trees, for example, or things that were identified as a palm. 
And I can also get a larger map here if I uh, push on the little eye icon there. So pretty cool way to organize your photos, I think. And again, what I really like about how this works is that if you got a big folder of photos, it doesn't mess it up. You can organize everything through Plex, have it all nice and sorted out for your Plex consumption, but still keep the files organized physically the way you had them before. It doesn't mess with that directory at all. And that might be something that could be attractive to some of you who have a big folder of files. You don't want to pay for a cloud service. You've got the Plex server running. Why not play with it and see if it's something that you can make use of? Again, the feature set here is not as robust as you might find in other places, but if you have a Plex server that you're using, it's not going to cost you any more to use it. And of course, you have unlimited storage provided you have a big hard drive installed on the device that is running your Plex server. That's going to do it for this look at Plex photos. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.tv supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Jim Callagher. Hot Sauce and Video Games, and Brian Parker. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.